This is how you can use different command properties for your Discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to quickly say that if you are interested in purchasing a bot package, you can get access to these in the description below. All of these have a features list within them if you go ahead and click on it. And I'll be in the Discord server here to answer any of your questions if you have any. You can also get the source code from this video by clicking the link in the description below and getting a god tier on Discord or a super or god tier on YouTube. All of that, again, will be in the description. If you're interested in that, feel free. This is how you can get the code from this video or any other video on my channel. So with that, let's actually go ahead and get into the code. So to start off, we're just going to go ahead and create a basic command so that we can actually go ahead and use these command properties. I'm going to be using my handler for this, which actually uses module.exports. So if you're interested in this, go ahead and use my handler. We can go over to community and we can go ahead and create properties.js and we can do const and we're going to get our slash command builder and then we can do equals require and we're going to go and get discord.js now we're just going to go ahead and create that command so we can do module.exports and we can just open this up we're going to get our data which is going to be our new slash command builder we can start by setting a name which is just going to be our properties testing it doesn't really matter and you can go ahead and set a description and you could say testing command properties and we can add a comma we're going to do async executes you could also do async run and we can open this up all we have to do here is just reply um, but we're not actually going to go ahead and put that in yet to start We're just going to go ahead and add a property So what I mean by a property is a command is an object as you can see the module.exports is an object here So if you were to actually console.log this command within really any of the run files You would be getting an object with the data the properties um, And a bunch of other things in that as well because it's an object you can technically add anything you would like to that So we can go above the data you could technically do it under But I think it works better if you do it above because that's where you have everything under that is just where the code is for the actual command So we can go at the start of the object or at the start of the command and we can just go ahead and give it a property So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and do owner and we can set that to true but you can do anything you would like um, for example we could just do like testing and we could give it a string value we could do like this works and we could also do maybe cooldown and we could give this a numerical value like 10. We could also add a comma. Just make sure you add a comma, otherwise this won't work. So I've added three different properties here. So one is a Boolean, one is a string, and one is a numerical value. So now let's just run some code in here so that we can get all of this information within the command. And then we're gonna go ahead and handle this within our interaction create. So we can go ahead and actually get our client because we're gonna need to get that uh, command so we can get client and then we can do const command equals client dot commands dot get and we can just go ahead and put in our properties Testing command that is the name of the command we're getting now We can just go ahead and send this so we could do await interaction dot reply and We could do contents and we could go ahead and do command dot to string Then we could also just go ahead and set informal to true and actually before we test this We're actually going to go ahead and send this in a little bit of a different way We can actually go ahead and create a variable so we can do const text and then we can do equals and we're just going to go ahead and open up a string i'm going to do command dot owner dot two string and we can do a comma we can go ahead and do command dot testing dot two string and then lastly we can do our command dot cooldown dot two string so the reason we're doing this is uh, you can't actually send this as an object even if it's two string it's going to be like object object so we're just going to send the information we need here uh, so we can just go ahead and do text and the other thing we could do is we could console.log our command and that way we can actually get the object so we can actually go ahead and run it now all right so here when we run it we get all of the values that we had within the command so true this works and 10 and if we actually go back into the console as you can see here we have our object like i was saying the command is an object so at the start of the object we have all of the values we just put in so that's owner true this works it's a string and we have our cooldown as a numerical value and then of course we have our slash commands with all of the options and the name and the the default permissions and all of that stuff as well as the executes uh, which i think this array has the code but i'm not 100 percent sure okay great so now that we have all of this working let's just go ahead and run all of these within an interaction create so you can see how this actually would be applicable to a command that you would be using so to do that we're going to go over to events and we can do interaction create so this is going to be when the command runs. So we're going to use the object here as reference. So we have owner, testing, and cooldown. So to start, we can just come in here. It doesn't really matter. And we can go ahead and say if, 
and we're gonna go ahead and start off with the owner so we can do owner equals equals and we can do true then we could just go ahead and do if interaction user the id is not equal to and then you could do the owner's id so for me that's gonna be my id uh, then we can just go ahead and return await interaction dot reply and we can say content and we can say you can't use this command and we're also gonna go ahead and set formal to true so now what we've done is when we run this command if the owner is not using the command, so everyone but me is going to respond to this without actually running any of this code. So none of this is going to happen. It's just going to reply and it's going to ignore everything else in the command file. Oh, and one other thing, this is actually going to have to be command.owner. I forgot to add that command in there. So now we could just go ahead and run any of these other ones. So like if you were doing a cooldown, you could use that or you were using testing, you could use that as well. Um, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and console.log and we could do command owner command testing and we can do command cooldown because i'm not going to go ahead and build an entire cooldown and the testing is just to show that it works for strings as well uh, so we're only going to use this for the owner but we're just going to go ahead and log everything else so now that we've set up a basic application of a property for a command, we can actually go ahead and run it again and test it out. All right, so back in the server, we can actually run this command and we can just go in and send it. Now notice I am the owner. This is the owner account that I put into the interaction create event. So if we go ahead and send it, it's just gonna give me the exact same response as it gave me in here. The one thing that is slightly different is, as you can see, we have our console.log event. This ran before uh, the command actually ran. So we have true, this works, and 10, uh, which is this console log, and then we have our command object, which ran right here. So that means this command actually ran. Now let's go ahead and try to run the command on a different account. All right, so now we can go ahead and run it. So we could do properties testing, and notice now I'm on this account right here. Uh, so if we actually go ahead and send it here, as you can see, it's going to say you can't use this command. So let's actually go into the console to check out what actually happened. So as you can see, now we actually don't have anything in the console. So because we caught this right here and uh, the owner was registered and somebody else was using the command, but the owner it actually just went ahead and returned and ignored everything else within this file, which is exactly what we would want because it is an owner command. The other thing that you should note is that uh, nothing in here worked as well. We didn't get this console. We didn't get this reply. We didn't get any other errors because we went ahead and returned with this interaction. So it basically cancels out anything within this code. So this is basically how you could control a bunch of different properties in your commands. So like you could do permission checks, moderator roles, owner commands. You could do command cooldowns for specific commands. Maybe if you were making an economy bot, you could do something with economy. You could have a database similar to the owner database that stores everyone that could use the command and it could run through that. This is very, very useful and I just figured this out, which is why I'm making a video on it. But feel free to use this for any application you can think of. This is just a guide on how it works and how you can actually handle it. All right, so that's how you can use properties in your slash command objects with your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.